On behalf of the Institut Cardiovascular Paris Sud LA Closure Team, welcome to this recorded live case showing you how advanced imaging can help you to plan, guide, and assess LA closure under conscious sedation using micro TE and CT fusion imaging with the Valve Assist 2 software. Here are some key numbers describing the ECPS. We are a high volume center with five cat lab suits and two dedicated cardiac MRI, performing more than 2200 PCI per year with 600 TAVIs, 1300 EP procedures, and about 80 LA closure procedures with this latter volume rapidly growing up. Every LA closure are performed together with an intervention cardiologist, an electrophysiologist, and a structural echocardiographer. As most of you know, about 15% of strokes are occurring in patients with non-anticoagulated atrial fibrillation. In these patients, about 90% of strokes are caused by clots forming in the left atrium. Because about 13% of atrial fibrillation patients have contraindication to anticoagulant, we estimate that there is more than 3 million of patients worldwide left with no stroke prevention therapy in whom evaluation for LA closure is of paramount importance. Having that said, let's go forward with this clinical case that will describe how we integrate different imaging modalities to guide LA closure in Messi. The patient performed in this video is a 81 year old woman with permanent atrial fibrillation presenting with recurrent GI bleeds under direct oral anticoagulant. Her CHADS VASC and her HASBED score are both five. On CT, the morphology of the left atrium is a wind socks with the largest diameter of the ostium of 32 mm and the landing zone measuring 26 by 29 mm for a mean diameter of 27.8. The amulet IFU sizing chart recommends a prosthesis 3 to 5 mm larger than the largest 2D echo diameter. Because we are using CT for sizing, which has been reported to be 2 to 3 mm larger than the 2D echo data, we typically use diameter on CT and we oversize by 2 to 4 mm. In this case, we chose an amulet 31 mm. The pre op CT has become the cornerstone of the LA closure planning. First, we use it to reconstruct and understand the 3D anatomy of the left atrium to get accurate measurement of the ostium, the landing zone, and the depth of the main, the main lobe. We can also localize the position of the fossa ovalis relative to the ostium of the left atrium. This helps selecting the appropriate delivery sheet for watchman cases and focus on the importance of, the, of an inferior transeptal puncture when the fossa ovalis is high relative to the left atrium. Second, during the procedure, we use the fluoro CT fusion overlay not only to guide the transeptal, but also to guide the cannulation of the left atrium with a pigtail and the positioning of the prosthesis on the predicted landing zone. Finally, micro TE ensure the device is in the good axis before deployment, which is critical for the amulet cases, and assess the device location and compression before final release. Nowadays, we use micro TE in every LAA closure procedures in Messi. This allows us to perform the procedure under conscious sedation while giving an excellent imaging quality to guide the procedure through every step from the transeptal puncture to the final release of the prosthesis. As previously described, we are now using micro TE imaging in most LA closure cases in our center. After having performed local anesthesia, our anesthesiologist inserts the micro TE probe. Once in the throat, the patient is asked to swallow the probe as for a regular TE. Having a smaller probe in the back of the throat instead of in the mouth allows the procedure to be performed under conscious sedation, even for longer procedures. To prevent epistaxis, we avoid inserting the micro TE probe in patient already under therapeutic anticoagulation before the start of the procedure. The transeptal sheet and needle are first advanced into the superior vena cava, and a pullback movement coupled with a clockwise rotation of the catheter is performed until you feel that the needle jump onto the fossa ovalis. There, 
Fine tuning of the position of the transeptal needle is guided by the micro T to get an inferior and posterior puncture. The bicuvel and the short axis views are typically used ideally with an X plan. Once the needle has crossed the septum, the needle is removed and replaced with a stiff wire with a 7 cm floppy tip. Position into the left superior pulmonary vein. A clockwise rotation of the transeptal sheet to about 5 to 6 o'clock can help you to get the stiff wire in the safe position. The wire Position will be confirmed by the micro TE, but also by seeing the wire exiting the cardiac silhouette under fluoroscopy. Avoid pushing the stiff wire in the left atrium as it is a fragile structure. Once the stiff wire is in the left superior pulmonary vein, we pull back and recross the septum two or three times with the transeptal sheet to facilitate the insertion of the 12 or 14 French sheet delivery sheet. If you have difficulty recrossing the septum with the delivery sheet, you can apply clockwise rotation on the sheet over the stiff wire. The sheet is then advanced into the left superior pulmonary vein and the wire and dilator are pulled back to a low back bleed. During these maneuvers, a first calibration of the CT fluoral fusion is performed using the carina of the bronchi as a landmark. The pigtail is then inserted into the sheet and will be directed into the left atrium, helped by the CT fluoral fusion overlay to cannulate the left atrium. Once the micro TE has confirmed that the pigtail is in the left atrium, the delivery sheet is advanced over the pigtail in a similar manner as a coronary wire for PCI. Contrast injection is performed through the pigtail and a second recalibration of the CT fluoral fusion is performed using the inject left atrium for recalibration. At this moment, we move the C arm into the optimal working view to get perpendicular to the landing zone. The pigtail is then removed and the prosthesis is advanced into the sheet by keeping the distal end of the delivery sheet at the level of the landing zone overlay. When the prosthesis is at the distal end of the sheet, the prosthesis is on sheet to obtain a ball configuration that is atraumatic and that can be centered onto the landing zone overlay. At that moment, the micro T is, is confirming that the prosthesis is in the good axis prior to deployment. The capsule is then deployed by pushing on the cord of the amulet to avoid losing the distal position, and the disc is deployed by pulling back the sheet. When the micro T has assessed the compression of the device and its position, a tug test is performed prior to final release of the prosthesis. As you appreciated on this clinical case, there is multiple advantages of this integrated imaging approach for LA closure. First, the pre-op CT gives key information to improve planning of the procedure by getting a better sense of the left atrium anatomy, getting accurate measurements for device sizing, and by selecting the optimal impl implantation C-arm angulation. Second, the CT fluoro fusion overlay helps not only for the transeptal puncture, but also helps to guide the cannulation of the left atrium and to deploy the prosthesis at the predicted landing zone level. Third, the micro TE allows to perform the procedure under conscious sedation by keeping an excellent imaging quality that will ensure that every steps of the procedure are performed safely from the transeptal puncture to the assessment of the deployed prosthesis. Fourth, by providing an landmark the CT fluoral fusion helps the communication not only between the two operators, but also with the echocardiographer. Overall, the CT fluoral fusion creates essential landmarks that can help the operators to perform more fluid manipulations throughout the multiple steps of the procedure, and this translates, as previously published, into a reduction of the contrast media use, procedural time, and fluoroscopy time. Again, thanks for watching. I hope you appreciate how much this integrated imaging approach could help you in your LA closure procedures.